Hello everyone, this is Wileam here. In today's Fuji Friday, I really don't have any news to report. It's December, it's the holiday season. All the companies are wanting to sell product, not announce products. So today I figured I'd take the time to talk to you about encoding and codexes that we're using on our mirrorless cameras. Right now, the hot new thing is the H.265 because it supports 10-bit 422 potentially, or actually it can. It's just that on the Fuji cameras, it only supports 420, which is still very good, but we're still looking for that magical 422 10-bit, but that's beside the point. The reason why I want to talk about this is because there are various different types of encoding that's available to our camera system. The H.265 encoding is definitely a presentation encoding. In other words, this is the encoding that you would want to use when you actually want to stream it to your consumer. This is not a codec that you would want to use if you want to edit with it, which is what we're getting when we're actually having to import it into Adobe Premiere Pro or whatever editor you want to use. Now, the downside to this is that because this is a presentation encoding, it's very difficult for our computers to actually run this in our timeline. So it actually takes quite a lot of work for the CPU, not the GPU. It's not the graphics cards that actually has to decode the actual base file. It's actually the CPU. A lot of people think that you need a really strong graphics card to actually run the file itself, which is the MP4 file. No, the CPU actually handles the bulk of all that work. The GPU actually handles any type of color grading or any type of effects on top of that file. So if you don't do a lot of rendering effects or if you don't do a lot of color grading like myself, if you actually invest in a very high priced GPU, what you'll find is that you're not gonna be using that very much. I can actually cheap out on my GPU because I just don't do a lot of color grading and effects. That's the reason why I invested it into the Fuji cameras. Now, having said all that, the reason why I want to present this, and it links to what I was talking about in my previous video, as we actually get higher resolutions, you know, we're going from 4K to 8K or just more frame rates, using this type of encoding becomes a struggle for almost any modern PC if you just want to drop it directly onto the timeline. Now, you can do proxies, which is really easy to do in Adobe Premiere Pro, but what you're essentially doing is that you're basically having to create a low-res version to work with inside Adobe Premiere Pro, and when you hit the export button, it uses the full-res version of the file when you actually export your final file to be delivered. The issue that I have with that is that if you have a lot of files, like usually when I go edit a vlog, I'll have like 30 to 40 some odd clips, and I don't know which ones I wanna use just yet. If I had to take the time to actually make proxies of all of those files, it's going to take a little bit of time to actually import into Adobe Premiere Pro. Also, I've kind of doubled my files that's on the computer, which is something I just don't want to deal with. I'd rather have a simplified workflow where I'm just working all with the same files so I can move it around from computer to computer very easily. This is something that I would like to do. So I'd rather have a very powerful computer that is able to actually run these files on the timeline without having to create additional files. Now, the best way for us to handle editing as a content creator is actually not to use MP4 as the format of choice for editing. We'd rather have an encoding like ProRes, which is designed specifically to be used with editors. It's actually not a presentation format. It's actually a format specifically designed for editing so that when you import it in, even if it's at full resolution, it still generally runs very well in the timeline. This is something that Apple has developed for quite a while. It's kind of the standard for a lot of the high-end cinema cameras. If you look at external recorders, they actually record directly to ProRes. That's what a lot of professionals like to use. My Blackmagic cameras that I use directly records to ProRes, and I can tell you that anytime I drop it into the timelines, they run very smoothly, they color grade really well. The picture colors right out of camera is also really good, and a lot of times I really don't have to do much creating on the Blackmagic cameras at all. So a ProRes type of encoding is something that I would like to see coming into more mirrorless cameras. It would make life a lot easier on us, especially when we start bumping up to higher resolutions when proxies might actually be a necessity for a lot of people, or you're just going to have to build a really high-end editing machine in order to actually edit directly with these files on a timeline. These are all of the things that we actually have to consider every single time we buy one of these cameras at this point. If it's going to be at 4K and above, you really wanna look at what type of encoding it's going to be going to, and if you actually need to buy an external recorder to actually go to a more professional encoding format for your editing needs. And one of my hopes going forward 
with Fuji getting more into video is that they actually look into those type of encodings to give us a little bit more options on what we want to do. We can either go with H.265, which will give us smaller, more compressed files, or we can go to a more edit friendly encoding like ProRes. But there is the downside that the file sizes are going to be larger because it is in ProRes, but it's a fairly good trade off. But having that option would be super beneficial for anybody using mirrorless cameras. And this is something that I hope to see in future mirrorless cameras, that there would be more adoption towards encodings that are designed specifically for editing. Anyways, those are my quick thoughts this week on video encodings. Please let me know what you think. If you have an opinion, definitely write it in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.